Hi, producer Seth here. We got a lot of feedback on social media when we shared our TikTok regarding this word, so much so that we removed the TikTok. If you've arrived here today seeking the British slang definition of this word, you're out of luck. But don't worry, we released an episode on our Patreon-exclusive podcast, Buttered Parsnips, just for you perverts out there. So, by heading to patreon.com slash butternoparsnips, you can hear all about what your twisted mind seeks. Now, to Kyle and Emily. What are some good gibberish words that you like? Oh. I mean, I remembered for the first time in weeks that we made a good gibberish word, which was gaga doo doo nonsense. We did. I am very proud of that. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like I probably use a lot of gibberish because I don't ever speak the <laughs> language that I was taught. Um, yeah. I think gaga doo doo nonsense was yours. I, yeah, and I think I probably thought it was a real word. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's how we arrive at most nonsense words. Yeah. That Kyle thinks he's speaking real things. It's just my tongues, you know. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. Kyle speaking in tongues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's possessed by the nonsense gods. I don't know. It's like balderdash. Is that gibberish? <laughs> I mean, very fancy gibberish. Yeah, I mean, I was always a fan. I liked that game a lot when I was a kid, so I would just throw that word around. I didn't really know what it meant. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Uh, do you have a, a fave jib? A fave jib? I hate yeah. the way you... Uh, that's really... Those are your gibberish <laughs> words, is that you like to say things like F-works and social meds. <laughs> I'm hip, you know? It's yeah, what the kids like. The kids. Yeah. Hey, Kyle, speaking of that hip thing oh, mm-hmm. that we do, uh, okay. is Butter No Parsnips. Welcome to Butter No Parsnips. Every week on Butter No Parsnips, your hosts Emily Moyers and Kyle Imperator take you on an adventure through the weird, wacky, wonderful, and sometimes even wicked world of one wayside word. Strange characters, delightful bits, and general joyousness abound. Join them as they test each other's etymological expertise. Good morning, everyone, because I know you're all listening at 4.35 a.m. before your early morning calisthenics. I'm Kyle Imperator. And I'm Emily Moyers. And someday we're going to get to an episode of Butter No Parsnips tonight. <laughs> someday tonight we're going to get to an episode of Butter No Parsnips, and it's going to be... Mm, Chef's kiss. It is going to be chef's kiss. I got a real good word today, Kyle. I'm excited and hungry. So give me a word for me to munch on. (laughs) Okay, Kyle, here's a good little word for you to munch on. Okay. Your word this week, and you might know it, is nonce. N-O-N-C-E. Nonce. Oh, I think I do, Emily. You might. This is a wordy word. But I'm going to need some goading to get there Hmm. (laughs) all right well Uh, can you give me the definition yeah can you give me the definition (laughs) and the spelling again and also maybe it's a social security number (laughs) no what's the language of origin please it is middle english yeah i had a feeling it was that i mean non sounds like just a jester character you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. oi the name's nonce I, I, uh, uh, look at me uh, dancing around with <laughs> with my bells on my on my head yeah yeah bells on 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 your cap so you jingle jangle no they've been surgically implanted oh on my, my head god it's very painful as surgery in this age was not <laughs> sterile. <laughs> nonce. Nonce. Which I can give you a one word clue. I can give yeah, you. Yeah, I love those. And I also forgot that we're doing them. So give me, give me one. I'm of really those. trying to push it. It doesn't seem like it's catching on with you, but I'm really, I, I think it's I a good like idea. I do like it. I do like it. <laughs> All right, Kyle, your one word clue is word. Yeah, I had a feeling that so I like so a nonce word is a thing. It is. If you can tell me what that means, I'll give you the the victory music. I mean, a nonce word. I mean, I want to say it's just a gibberish word, but I feel like that's too. It's a little you know, more specific. More specific. It's um okay. So it is a gibberish word used in a poetical sense. No. 
Ha. <laughs> Would you like me to tell you? Go ahead and tell me. We've already been going at this for <laughs> well An over hour? three days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kyle. A nonce word is a word created for a single occasion to fill a specific oh, need. Oh, it means like once, nonce. Like, I, well, we're going to get into it. It's, oh. it's a little bit. But yeah, it's a it's like a word that's just created wholesale for use in a specific case. And oh. then sometimes they catch on and sometimes they are just only exist in that context. Please tell me you've got a list of nonce words that you shall read without <laughs> taking a breath. I, I've got a few that we might get into later when it's oh. game time. Oh. Uh, um, Put me in the game, coach. <laughs> Not that's yet, what I'll Kyle, say later. Okay. I was going to yeah. say, it's the beginning beginning of the episode. But nonce word comes from a phrase that existed in Middle English for the mm. nonce, which meant, well, it could have meant a couple different things, but the main thing it meant was for a particular purpose. So did nonce mean a specific purpose? Is that what its definition was? So nonce, as I said, it comes from early Middle English. The earliest examples I found were from the 1100s. And they were seen in a variety of spellings, as with most words in early English. Yes. But yeah. most common when the word first came about were nuns, N-O-N-E-S. Oh. Or nans, N-A-N-E-S. Oh. And for those of like, you thinking that should be nans, it wasn't because all the vowels changed the way you pronounce them between yeah. Middle English and Modern English. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, Nans was probably a case of what is called rebracketing. Do you know what rebracketing is, Kyle? Yeah, I'm pretty sure rebracketing is when like your TV falls off the wall and you gotta like <laughs> buy a whole new thing to get it back up there. <laughs> buy a whole new bracket. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <got> <laughs> <laughs> no, rebracketing is a linguistics word that basically means when a compound word or phrase is split incorrectly. And I'll give you an example and you'll understand immediately. The word hamburger was originally omburger. It was rebracketed to hamburger. And that's why we end up with the standalone word burger, which basically isn't, it was never meant to be a word because it came from omburg. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. And there's a lot of words like that. Like alone is another one. Alone is a compound of all one, but it was sort of rebracketed to be a loan, which is why we get something like the adjective loan or lonely. Oh, I think I have an example yeah, in go my ahead. mind. I don't want to say it because I'm worried you're going to talk no, about No, no, no. Go for it. That's all I had to say about rebracketing. <laughs> I also don't want to say it because I want to talk about it on a different episode someday. So <laughs> Never mind. Don't say it at all. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's what rebracketing is when a word gets sort of split up wrong when people yeah. read it. So it's likely that prior to the word nonce existing, there was a phrase for then ands. And then meant the same thing as the in Middle English. And ands, A-N-E-S, we're not 100% sure what that meant. It kind of makes sense for it to mean ones because an, A-N-E, is the Middle English form of one. And oh. for the once makes sense for what the sure. phrase means. But that theory is doubtful because there's a different Middle English word for once which oh. is A-E-N-E-S-S. -E -S -S. And you will see both that word and for the ands, A-N-E-S, in the same books. So it seems like they were two distinct words. Or maybe... Okay, so it, here's my theory. Ready? Mm -hmm. Maybe one of them was copywritten. Copyrighted. That's copyrighted? not the same as copywritten, <laughs> is it? <laughs> One of them was trademarked. Was, was yeah. Someone so had only, ownership of that word. Yeah. So you could, <laughs> yeah. So it was like, oh, I can't spell it this way in this context. So I've just got to, <laughs> you know, it sure. was an early form of that. It was probably like, you know, uh, ye old Disney or. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Name another or, one. Yeah. Another one would be <laughs> um, the Coca Colarium. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the room where you drink Coca-Cola. Yeah, yeah. But if you're talking about drinking Pepsi-Cola, you can't call it the Coca-Colarium. Right. That was the Pepsi-Coloscopy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's another good gibberish word that Kyle has invented that you should all start using. The Pepsi-Coloscopy. 
<laughs> oh god! I keep telling you, this, I had the bills on my head, and then they gave me a Pepsi coloscopy. <laughs> I was in so much pain. Nods, buddy, you got to stop going to these doctors. Uh, they come to me. <laughs> oh, that's even worse. <laughs> <laughs> so in any case, the phrase for then ands was rebracketed to for the nans, like the N moved over. Sure. Which then became for the nonce as time went on. Did they pronounce ands as ands or did they pronounce it as ands? Uh, again, vowels in Middle English are tough. It, well, Come on, Emily, so, you don't have any like first-hand <laughs> recordings of what someone it, from Middle England? What it probably is, it, a British person would say for the nons in either spelling. But because we're Americans, the A is pronounced for the nans. So, in terms of how the phrase for the nonce has been used, it actually has a few different meanings. As I said at the top, the most common is for the purpose of or for the express purpose of mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. As in this quote from the Canterbury Tales, quote, Ooh. a cook they had with them for the nonce to boil the chicken with the marrow bones. I've already forgotten what for so the nonce funny. means in... <laughs> In any context. <laughs> for the purpose of. For the so purpose they, they of. Had, they, they brought a cook for the express purpose of boiling the chickens with the marrow bones. I mean, that seems like something anybody could do. I, I feel like you don't need to bring <laughs> no, a cook no, no, with that you is to do that. <laughs> expertise activity. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what do I know? I'm not Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> That's true. And you're not in the Canterbury Tales. I'm not, but nonces. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Send him away. <laughs> One time, I boiled me finger by accident. Oh, I'm not going to touch that one. <laughs> so another thing that for the nods could mean, <laughs> it could also mean on purpose, as in this quote from an 1880 oh. dictionary from Cornwall, quote, he didn't do it for the nonce, that is, on purpose. That was from a dictionary, you said? Yeah, that was like meant to be an example of how was it, it could like be used. Was it like a quote from like a a, a legal proceeding? Yeah. <laughs> and they're just no. like, they didn't do it for the nonce. So like, <laughs> so, let him go. You know, he killed him by accident. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> he drove a tractor through his house. <laughs> yeah, but not for the nonce. Oh, all right. Rescinded. Good thing we've got a jury of 12 nonces here. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't do it for me. <laughs> For the nods could also be used to mean for the time being, as in this quote from a 1988 book about Shakespeare's Hamlet. The author says, quote, we are asked to believe in what the characters are doing, or at least for the nods to suspend our disbelief. Oh, yeah, that's an interesting it's like, uh, you know, very parallel. It's it's near at hand, you know, that definition. I feel like just the by like virtue of the way the phrase is worded. You could just accidentally use it in different contexts, and yes. that's how it like gains new meanings. There, yeah, I, the the Oxford English Dictionary listed a lot of other contexts that you yeah. could use it, but like most of them only have like one or two examples, so they're not yeah. very trustworthy. <laughs> it's like, well, why did you get Indian takeout tonight? Uh, just for the nonce. Yeah, <laughs> just cause. <laughs> But that's no, kind of what it means. No, for the nons, Emily. Oh, for the nons. You know what Kyle said to me last night, everyone listening? He said, you know, I think I'm pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> he said, sometimes people tell me I'm not funny, but I think I am. <laughs> I wish I could say this wasn't a real conversation that happened between us. <laughs> but I meant it in more of a, like... I don't let that get to me. Like I'm, I still laugh at myself. That's I laugh good. with myself. That's you good. Know? Buddy. <laughs> <laughs> that usage, that uh, using knots to mean like for the time being, I like a lot. I, I found another quote of that from a Jeeves and Wooster book. Somebody saying, "I'm going to run in a race soon." She said, shelving the doll for the nonce and descending to ordinary chit chat. That's it just great. Means, just putting it down for a sec. I mean, I we could definitely get for the nonce trending. For yeah, sure. I, yeah. Hashtag for the nonce. Hashtag for the nonce. And I think we certainly could because it was. it's also been used in a lot of poetry 
just to mean nothing. Just like if you needed to make your meter and rhyme work, you could just throw in for the knots. So funny. Uh, as in uh, this piece of 14th century verse, the lion hungered for the knots. Full fast he ate raw flesh and bones. And that's I mean, one well, of those old timey things rhyme. where, well, it's one of those old timey things where they <laughs> rhyme like rain and again. They didn't, they, I hate, <laughs> I hate sight rhymes. I yeah. cannot, I cannot get over the fact that it's like, you could have just found a different word. There's a million words and you chose to just not have it rhyme. Yeah. Like, but it's if you're going to do that, yeah, if you're going to do that, then just don't do rhyme scheme. Like, yeah. <laughs> just commit to not having rhymes. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> you don't have to. Yeah. These are your rules that you're breaking. <laughs> was non spelled N O N E S? Like I nuns? think in that one they were both spelled with an A N E S. It was nains and banes or nons and are bonds. Are you kidding me? <laughs> All right, listen. At, at least it was actually a psych rhyme. Yes, it was. And the point is that for the nonce, you could use it to mean just about anything your heart desires that vaguely relates to for the purpose or for the minute or for something. You can use it for the nonce. But Kyle, let's get back to nonce words because yes. that is a much later meaning. That didn't come about into the 1800s, but it mm. is, I think, the more common usage of nonce today and is probably why you've heard of it. Yeah, I feel like I've definitely looked into a nonce word and that's how i came across it probably i'm just struggling so much to figure out what that was but you'll name it in this episode and then I'll, <laughs> uh, I'll we'll know. see we'll see yeah. so yes again nonce word refers to a word or phrase that was created for the nonce basically for a specific usage for a specific moment and it is this usage of it is sort of self-referential because the phrase nonce word was coined by a man named James Murray, who was the primary editor of what is now the Oxford English Dictionary. Oh. When it was first being compiled, it was called the New English Dictionary or the NED. Mm -hmm. And at the front of the NED. The NED. The NED. <laughs> yeah. At the front of the NED, there's a section called General Explanations, which essentially tells you like how to read this dictionary. So it has a list of what pieces of information are in each entry for each mm -hmm. word, one of which is, quote, the status where there is any peculiarity as obs for obsolete, arc for archaic, colloque for colloquial, dial for dialectical. Here also is added, when applicable, the epithet rare, indicating that only one or no actual instance of the use of the word is known to us. Words apparently employed only for the nonce are, when inserted in the dictionary, marked nonce word. Oh. Yeah. Is that something they still use in the OED? Yes, not as much, because I think now they work harder at finding the etymology. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> but there are still ones in the current OED that, that are marked nonce words. And in that original NED, in the NED, there are <laughs> loads of entries marked nonce words. But nonce word was used throughout the NED. And just to give you an example of that notation being used, mm -hmm. there was an entry in the first edition of the NED for a word, agreemony, A-G-R-E-E-M-O-N-Y. Is that like agreeable alimony? Is that what that is? <laughs> it is marked obs, which we just learned means obsolete. It's defined as agreeableness, a nonce word probably intended to suggest acrimony. And acrimony means uh, basically the opposite of agreeableness, bitterness or ill feeling. Yeah. Yeah. So it means, oh, wait. So agreemony means agreeableness, but it was probably formed that way to look like an antonym for acrimony. That's so good. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> wow. I mean, that's just clever. It is. Can I use agreemony? As a podcast word? No, I've just defined it. <laughs> no, I want to use it in everyday of speaking absolutely you should it's obsolete but we can bring it back agree -many. get agree -many. it trending hashtag agree -many. hashtag agree -many. <laughs> it's also happens to be the currency of of kyleopolis <laughs> of, Kyle, of kyloscopy <laughs> of kyloscopy <laughs> <laughs> but what's crazy is that if you look up the term nonce word in the modern day Oxford English Dictionary, the first two quotes that they have listed as proof of this word are mm -hmm. the two quotes that I just read from the NED. 
That's so funny. They were like, listen, we might as well just say we came up with it. They did. <laughs> yes, because that, no, that's, that's nonce word as a whole, right? Yes. Yeah. So yes, there's like sure. a whole entry for, for the nonce and all the other phrases thereupon. But then at wow. the bottom, there's a section on nonce word. And the first two entries are them because they, they made it. <laughs> So I just have a bit to say about James Murray, about the guy who coined sure. nonce word. First of all, I just want to send you a picture of what this guy looks like. Oh, sure. Because it's very important for you to see. I've got an image in my head before I click that he's like Freudian looking. You're not far. I do want to get oh, your thoughts. Oh, yes. Wow. Yeah. That, uh, yeah. He's like Nostradamus. He's like... I was thinking like Merlin. I mean, uh, yeah. He's got the freaking... What is it? One of those tri-cornered graduation caps and he's holding the book in a way that no human ever would he's got an alien hand he's got an alien hand it's (laughs) webbed but not the middle two fingers yes he kind of looks like santa between christmases when he's really uh, like cutting down on weight (laughs) and also between dimensions (laughs) yeah you know i think i i watched a video or read about the origin of the Oxford English Dictionary. Are you going to talk at all about that? Am I cutting into your... I, I, I'm a little bit, but you should talk about what you know, and I'll fill in the gaps. I, I, I Correct me if I'm wrong, but they were like, we've got to put all the words together in the biggest way possible, but it's impossible to do by myself. So they just had like people submit yeah. definitions, and they just had a team of people like going through and be like, all right... These are like how it's been used and this is quotes that we can use it for and like took like a long time, like decades, right? It did, yeah. So the initial estimate, they knew it was going to take a while. They said this is probably going to take like 10 years to get like a really complete dictionary. Yeah. And we're expecting the end result to be maybe like four volumes, four books, four big old books. The completed dictionary was published 50 years after they started. Yeah, 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 yeah. And had 12 volumes. <laughs> yeah. Incredibly, James Murray was still alive. No, he was dead. <laughs> and he was like, uh, I'm so glad I could finally see my son. <laughs> uh, no, his son actually worked on the dictionary as well, as did his Aww. three daughters. Aw. Yeah. It was and a his real wife. family affair. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was it was a massive job though. There were loads of, so James Murray was the senior editor. Eventually they brought on a second senior editor. Murray didn't want there to be another editor. He was like, "No, I'm going to I'm going to head this myself." And then he started falling behind. And yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the Oxford University Press was like, you got to get somebody else to like work parallel to you, but like start at a different letter of the alphabet. <laughs> yeah. And he was like, no, 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 I'm going to like get better at it over time and I'll get faster. So I'll catch up. And that was not the case at all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so there were two senior editors and then eventually they brought on two other editors as well. All of those editors had a whole team of assistants. And then there were also a lot of what were called readers, most of them unpaid volunteers who were just reading through books and newspapers and any kind of written word to pull out quotes to cite as like examples of words in context. And they had this room called the scriptorium where they were just going through all the all the um, quotes that people had sent the, in. The coca colarium. The coca colarium. <laughs> yes. Uh, and they literally erected a specific post box outside of the scriptorium because they were getting so many slips so much, through the mail. So, so much fan mail. Yeah. I love that. I would volunteer myself for that any day of the week. Yeah. I would become a monk to do that work. <laughs> And when I say monk, we all know what I mean when I say monk. We mean, I mean, <laughs> it's a jungle I mean, out there. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> Tony Shalhoub's monk. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, Kyle, you would have better odds of getting in than me because it's worth mentioning that nearly mm. all of the people working on this mm. dictionary were men. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. The OED's modern website has a list of all the main contributors to the dictionary's first edition. And mm-hmm. out of, I think, nearly 400 contributors, I counted 40 women total. Well, I, I mean, women couldn't read back then. <laughs> Kyle. <laughs> This was what, the 1970s? <laughs> <laughs> this is the late 1800s. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> what? That guy's from the late 1800s? Yes. yes. He's real fashionable. The guy who looks like a Middle Ages <laughs> wizard who's living mean, in 1878. I mean, that was a photograph, Emily. Yes. You know what he had? A telephone. <laughs> Oh, wow oh my god <laughs> next thing you're gonna tell me that that guy rode a rode in a little uh sidecar on a motorbike <laughs> <laughs> wow i love that visual though <laughs> <laughs> you know with little goggles <laughs> um, and a helmet that go- is shaped to go specifically over his square oh, hat <laughs> for his scholar's cap <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that is something I do want to talk more about. I think perhaps in a in a Patreon buttered parsnips episode for Ooh. Women's Month, because there are I've discovered just really not a lot of female voices in the history of the English language, and I feel like that's worth talking about. So, you know, definitely. If Emily. you want to hear that, head over to the Patreon and give us some money. <laughs> All of the money that we make during uh, Ladies Month, God, Women's I Month, knew you were gonna say is going to go straight to Emily. <laughs> yes, so. yes, directly to me. Yeah. That's how we're celebrating Women's Month. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then for the rest of the year, all the money is going to go to yeah. me. <laughs> it's the most accurate way we could depict the wage divide. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So regardless of that, (laughs) in the interest of closing out this episode of Butter No Mm. Parsnips, Kyle, Mm -hmm. do you think you can use the word nonce in a sentence? I think I can. In any context you would like, because there's lots of ways you could use it. There are lots of ways that you could use it. Yeah, I've got one. All right. Hit me. Okay. I'm thinking, wait, hold on. I got to think it over. <laughs> I got it in my brain. I just want to formulate it before it comes out and it's uh, a jarbled mess. Jarbled. Jarbled. That's there a we good, go. that's a good gibberish is, here word. We go. We're going to put we that go. up at the beginning. Ready? Ready? Here we yeah. this Here's my word. You got here's it. my sentence. Okay. Okay. Thanks to this episode <laughs> and what I just uttered from yeah. the bowels of my uh, body. Uh huh. Jarbled will be a nonce word that I use for the nonce. For the nonce. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, Kyle. That that Thank made you. grammatical sense. Thank you so much. Uh, that's all we can ask for on this show. <laughs> <laughs> but we can ask one more thing, Kyle. Ooh. Would you like to play a game? <gasps> Put me in the game, coach. <laughs> oh, you get it. I forgot, but you got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kyle, your game this week is called Nonsense. Oh, <gasps> love it. Uh, and it's real si- going to be a real quick and simple little game. I'm going to give you some information about a nonce word in the English language. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you've just got to tell me what the word is. No problem. I will get zero of these and be happy about it. <laughs> no, I think I've got three here. I think you will get two of them. Okay. Your first one, coined in 1871 by Lewis Carroll in his poem Jabberwocky, this verb describes a victorious mode of transportation. Wow, Kyle died, huh? I'm trying to recite the poem in my the head. Thing. <laughs> but I only know the f- opening paragraph. <laughs> We've um, talked about this word before in our Scorigami episode. I'm sure we did. Now I'm trying to remember all those words. <laughs> we talked about, did we talk about Vorpal? That was the blade. Yeah. Did we talked about... Oh, I know it. I know it. I know it. Well, tell it to me if you know it. <laughs> I will tell it now. Hence, uh, galumphing. It is. Yes. Can you remember the line? The bander snatch. Nope. <laughs> <It's>... Okay. <laughs> Uh, Never mind. Uh, I regret asking. <laughs> no, I know it. I know it. I know it. It is um, Alice Galumph. Nope. Uh, Alice is not in the poem. Jabberwocky. <laughs> at af- when she got home after having defeated the Bandersnatch and was like, "Now I'll order some dominoes." Okay. Well, it is. I deserve it. <laughs> after defeating the Jabberwock, <laughs> yeah, he left it dead, and with its head, he went galumphing back, mm. which means galloping triumphantly. If you want to hear more about what the words in the Jabberwocky mean, listen to Skorakami. <laughs> All right, Kyle, next one. Coined in 1954 by writer Sylvia Wright in an essay for Harper's Magazine, this noun describes a mishearing of song lyrics, which creates an entirely new meaning. Oh. Yeah, it's a good one. I don't know the word for this. Yeah, this is the one I thought you might know. Yeah, 
It's a little known word, but it's a real good one. You're gonna t- you're gonna tell it to me. You're gonna tell it hence, and then I'm gonna <laughs> okay. I I'm will tell it hence. It. <laughs> yeah, please do. Uh, the word is mondegreen. <gasps> oh yes, 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 yes. Yeah. that's another word that I've just come across. That I'm like, oh, I could do an episode on this, but Emily had to throw it into a <laughs> game. Like that's it's right. Nothing. I've used it up. No, it is a good. It's not nothing <laughs> we'll though. It's both a good word. It in a year. <laughs> Yeah, she was writing about, Sylvia Wright was writing about how there was a poem that her mother used to read her when she was a child, that the poem, the actual line is, they have slain the Earl of Moray and laid him on the green. But as a child, she misheard it as, they have slain the Earl of Moray and Lady Mondegreen. That is so good. (laughs) It is. And then she goes on to say, the point about what I shall hereafter call Mondegreens, since no one else has thought up a word for them, is that they are better than the original. (laughs) 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 She's like, whatever random shit you come up with is always better. (laughs) Like, I'm blue. If I were green, I would die. That's right. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> All right, last one, Kyle. This one I think you'll last get. Last one. Coined in 2013 by software developer mm. Gabby Rassen, this mm-hmm. adjective is used to describe people who are unsuccessfully trying to be trendy. Oh, no, Kyle. I'm going to see if Seth gives me the answer. <laughs> Seth should give you the answer because Seth has told you this answer before. I'll give you a hint, Kyle. Um, we discussed this in a Patreon episode before. Okay, so the answer is... I'll give you another hint, Kyle. I said this word to you last night. <laughs> is it chuggy? It is chuggy. <laughs> okay. Do you remember the conversation we had last night, Emily, when I said, I, I honestly don't remember what chuggy <laughs> means? So funny. <laughs> so chuggy, for people who don't know, C-H-E-U-G-Y, describes people who are just like slightly off trend and trying a little too hard. And Gabby Resson said of it, quote, it was a category that didn't exist. There was a missing word that was on the edge of my tongue and nothing to do describe it and chuggy came to me how it sounded fit the meaning and it does you know i feel reinvigorated emily (laughs) in my quest to change the story of my jarbled language (laughs) into real words that others can you uh, can use yeah, well, thank you. You know what? You're something special, Emily. <laughs> oh, thanks, Kyle. <laughs> Great word. Love nonce. I'm going to... Thanks, man. Uh, you know, I think it is really useful. Like, yeah. nonce word, the idea is really useful, like, just, like, when we're talking about language stuff. But, you know, nonce... Like, for the nonce? For the nonce. Yeah, we is should like all just start using it. to say. Yeah. yeah. We absolutely should. It's a good one. What else should we do, Kyle? I think we should all... Remember that you can find Butter No Parsnips on social media, on Facebook, and on Instagram at Butter No Parsnips Podcast. And if you like today's episode, please consider giving us a five-star rating or review wherever you heard us. And if you really like today's episode, consider donating to our Patreon at patreon.com slash Butter No Parsnips. Donating $5 or more earns you a shout out either on social media or here on the podcast. Thank you so much to all of you. You help us make what we make. And with that, I have been Emily Moyers. And I've been Kyle Imperator. And this has been Butter No Parsnips. Hey, I do that at the end of every episode. I gotta stop. Nah, that's all right. You're just like a l- regular Fonz. I'm a regular you're, Fonz. You're a nonce Fonz. <laughs> I, I do it for the Fonz. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just for the Fonz. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Butter No Parsnips. Butter No Parsnips is produced by Seth Glicksman, Emily Moyers, and Kyle Imperator. The theme music and additional music is by Kyle Imperator. If you liked listening to this episode, subscribe and give us a good rating and or positive review wherever you heard it. If you really liked listening, consider donating to our Patreon at patreon.com slash butternoparsnips. There you can get bonus content you can't get anywhere else, like the monthly Patreon-exclusive podcast Buttered Parsnips. Your support means the world to us and encourages us to keep making more. Thanks in advance, and we'll be back next week.